Today's episode of Losha Looks Inside, we have the Zoom Player Pro 4040. This was the one of the flagship models of the day. That's always a volume pedal. It's the expression pedal. Yes, it does whammy pitch up and down. Uh, I'll give you a bit of a view there. You've got the... Um, the expression pedal choices there things that it can do this model has MIDI so you train you change patch number and it transmits that patch number to MIDI that's all it does it doesn't let you uh, doesn't send out a continuous controller for the pedal that would be great but it might be a bit too much to ask for now this uh, unit is I've bought this as a Birthday present for my friend Bill. It's Bill's birthday tomorrow. Happy birthday, Bill, aka James Earthenware. Uh, let's get straight to the pulling it apart. Unfortunately, I'm holding my camera with one hand because I didn't bring my camera holder with me. So it's just going to be a bit janky. But most of my teardowns are janky anyway. It's from Troy Music. Has anyone got any good things to say about Troy Music? Sound off in the comments below. Ha ha, no one has anything good to say about Troy Music. The, the staff were great, the owner was a cantankerous old bastard. Um, it, it came from the swap shop. Everyone knows I buy most of my things from Music Swap Shop in Carlton. Right, so after you take the back off, there's this board and there's a bunch of screws around there and in the middle of this board this is the main board underneath it we have the led and control board that has no audio processing in it the rocker pedals are attached to two identical breakout circuit boards that are almost identical you would think but no they've got a different part number on them when it really could have been the one part number. Oh well. So to get at the circuitry. Uh, now you this is made in Japan. Uh 92, 93 or so. There are some bodges on the back, like uh there's a transistor, there's a wire. Um it's not too bad. Okay, so uh what we have here is the main board. Okay, I've propped that up on my uh, sandwich box now. Now we can look at the main board. This zoom unit has analog distortion. Analog distortion. And it's got an analog send and return. It's very, it's a very, very powerful unit. Uh, now, over here, that is the standard Mitsubishi dual VCA chip that's directly wired to the volume pedal. The expression pedal goes to another another part of the circuit. Now, around here, here and here, the sort of analog end of the things, there's a lot of 4053 analog switches. These handle switching in resistors and capacitors for the different distortion modes, which is and so you've got some op amps there for the for the distortion. You've got some of these are 4053s. You have so the 4053 switch different components in and out of the circuit. You have uh, now I'm going to zoom here. This Asahi Kasei is the analog to digital, digital to analog converter. There is a main chip here that does the majority of the. The majority of the DSP heavy listing. This is a TMS57000 digital signal processor. Uh, I'll get back to that. That's the chip, the D7805. So that's an 80, 80 series, I think, something like that CPU. There's some boring stuff down here, like switching. Um, that's the RAM chip for the reverb and the delays. Everything else is pretty boring. Like a voltage regulator. Thing takes 9 volts in. Um, 
these are all the output jacks and the MIDI jack. There's a that's the MIDI jack. The unit originally had a cable, one of those little nubs that you tie the cable around. I don't know anyone who uses them. I always just pull them off everything. Now, uh, the this TMS chip here is used in quite a few different uh, 90s, 2000s DSP effects units. Notably for myself, it's used in the Behringer line of rack units. So the, the modularizer, the virtualizer, those first gen one-up silverface rack units, they used it. And it's even still used in the DSP 2024P in the FX, what's it, the FX 3000, the FX 2000, the, mod, the updated version of the DSP 2024P, which is just the same uh, horse with a different jockey, different paint on it. Um, look, I've gone on enough. I don't think there's anything too remarkably interesting to say about this other than... Look, it is what it is. It back in Australian dollars when this was new, it was over a thousand dollars, which is crazy. Like the the cost of import things from Japan back then were was sizable. Is there anything I'd change in it? No, because it's perfect. It does what it does what it's meant to do. It's a whimsical little uh, thing. There, there's a. There's a space there for two different crystal sizes, and that's a blue one. That's a ceramic re resonator clock crystal. Um, I've gone off on on about this enough. Uh, I hope someone enjoys the video. Have a great afternoon. Thanks from Losha. Losha out.